Hello everyone, it's scientist Renee. I'm excited to see you again. Today we are going to be lesson, working on lesson 2.3 in Waves Energy and Information. We're going to be investigating particles. We're going to do this lesson a little bit differently than it's written on the Amplify website, so if that's what you're looking at, just know that we're going to look a little bit different. We're going to do things in a different order. So we're going to keep investigating the question, how does sound energy travel through material? We know it can travel through, and so now we're wondering, well, how does that actually happen? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to finish reading the book that we started, Sound on the Move, to learn more about how sound energy travels through materials. It's going to help us better understand what we observed in the sim in our last lesson, and we're also going to go into the simulation after this reading, and we're going to do a little bit more. So hopefully this book is going to help us understand what's happening. So I'm going to read you the rest of the book. We read up to, I think, page 13. We read about mountain bluebirds, and we learned about their syrinx that vibrates. So now we're going to learn about some different animals. So we're going to start on page 14. Let's see if we can make this a little bit bigger. There we go. How do sperm whales communicate? Sperm whales live in the ocean all over the world. These whales make clicking sounds to send messages to one another. The sounds they make must travel in the water to reach other sperm whales. Water is the material that sperm whales, sperm whale clicks travel through. Like air and all other materials, water is made of tiny particles. This diagram helps us visualize what the particles of water would look like if we could zoom in to see them. What do you notice about the water particles compared to the particles of air? you might see that the particles of water are packed in much closer together. However, they can still move around and slide past one another. This makes me think of the diagram that we saw on pages eight and nine, where we saw ground packed together, water a little bit further apart, and gas very far apart. To make a clicking sound, a sperm whale must first breathe air into its lungs. As it swims underwater, the whale moves the air through tubes and air sacs inside its head. The moving air causes vibrations in flaps of skin and muscle. These flaps are similar to human vocal cords. The vibrating flaps are the source of the sound waves. The sound waves travel outward through the head by way of particle collisions. That's an interesting term. The vibration of the whale's head disturb the nearest particles of water. Then these water particles collide with the particles next to them. Those particles collide with the next water particles and so on. That word collides coming up a lot. We're gonna investigate that in the sim. We call this pattern of motion a sound wave. The sound waves of a sperm whale's clicks can travel long distances in the ocean to reach listeners. In this case, the listeners are faraway whales. So it looks like we've got a diagram. We can see those tubes inside the whale's head, those vibrating flaps, the things that move. We've got an air sac, an oil-filled sac, and then we've got lungs. I bet those are very big lungs. And this uh, caption says, this diagram shows water particles colliding. The pattern of collisions is the sound wave from a sperm whale's click the sound wave moves through the water. So I see the whale here, I see an ear here. So it looks to me like all these particles are kind of in little groups, that's interesting. Ooh, we've got a different animal. How do kangaroo rats communicate? Kangaroo rats are small desert animals that live in underground burrows. These animals can send signals through the ground. The ground is the material that the kangaroo rat signals travel through. The ground, just like air and water, is made up of tiny particles. We can't see these particles either. Still, we can visualize them as looking something like this. I recognize that that's the same diagram that we saw on that pages 9 and 10, the one that showed us the mountain scene. What do you notice about the particles that make up the ground? You might see that the particles of the ground are packed in even more tightly than the particles of water. Yeah, they're definitely 
pretty squished together. These particles can vibrate, but they can't move around freely. They have no place to go. So that's a little bit different than the water where it seems like, you know, the, the particles can move a little bit more. So I wonder if that's going to make a difference if there's a, if there's sound traveling through the ground. Kangaroo rats communicate by foot drumming. A kangaroo rat taps its foot on the ground to make the ground vibrate. The vibrating particles of the ground collide with the particles next to them. Then, <coughs> excuse me, then those particles collide with the particles next to them and so on. This pattern of motion is a sound wave. The sound wave travels away from the kangaroo rat for long distances by way of particle collisions. A kangaroo rat drums its foot to let other rats know that it owns the underground burrow where it is drumming. When a kangaroo rat drums, the sound wave travels through the ground. Eventually, the sounds reach other kangaroo rats in the area. These listeners can sense the sound waves in the ground and understand the message, this burrow is mine. I guess that would kind of be like going into your house and just hitting the wall to show people that you own the house. We've got a diagram here too, just like we had with the sperm whale diagram. So it says this diagram shows particles that make up the ground. I do notice that they are closer together than the particles in this drawing. Hmm. The particles are colliding as the sound wave from foot drumming travels through them. So again, I'm kind of seeing these moving or I see them grouped up. I wonder what that has to do with anything. Messages are all around us. All the time, animals are sending important messages in the air, the ocean, and even the ground. Animals get important information by listening to the sounds other animals make. They may find out when family members or predators are nearby. They may learn where to find their next meal. Different animals live in the air, in the water, or in the ground. However, all of these animals rely on communication in order to survive. And that looks like the end of our book. We do have our glossary. One thing I want to look at is collision because we've heard that word a lot. So it looks like a collision is two or more things bumping into each other. And we heard about particles colliding. So I guess those little pieces that make up everything bump into each other. noticed a couple things. What did we notice about the diagram of the sperm whale's click? I, we noticed that, you know, these particles are kind of, it almost looks like a pattern to me. They're not just randomly scattered everywhere. And as I visualize the particles moving, what pattern of motion do you picture in your mind? So that's an interesting one. I would like to picture that using the simulation. So that's what we're gonna do in our next activity. But before we do, I want you to just picture in your mind, imagine you could see the air made of all these tiny little particles. Like maybe you, it's almost like you threw up some flour or dirt into the air and you can see all these sparkling little particles. Now, as you hear my voice coming through your computer speakers, picture, visualize what's happening to those particles of air. Are they moving? Are they still? Is my voice using them at all? I want you just to take a minute and picture that in your brain. So one last vocabulary word that we're going to add before we move on to our simulation in our next video is that word collision, which we heard is two or more things bumping into each other. So if your fists do a collision, one fist bumps, so this would be a collision. We're going to stop the video here. And in our next video, we're going to go into the sim. I'll see you soon. Hi, welcome back scientists. You may notice that I've changed my hair and shirt for you just to keep it interesting. So we're going to keep talking about sound. And this part, we're going to talk about visualizing particles. When we were in the sim, and just in real life, let's think about what material does sound usually travel through when an instrument is being played? 
Take a second and think about that. If you've got somebody in the room, maybe tell them what you think. What material does sound travel through when an instrument's played? So in The Sim, the material that uh, sound travels through is air. If you've ever been to a concert and you've heard instruments being played, it's the same thing. It's traveling through air to your ears. And so now I'm wondering, what did you observe as the sound energy from the instrument traveled through the air? And we're gonna go back to the sim one more time. We're gonna do one more example. Play that one more time. We'll do that once more with our violin again. Okay. And so our question is, what did you observe as the sound energy from the instrument traveled through the air? I want you to think about that while we do a little bit more reading. So Sound on the Move, we read part of this book in our last lesson, and today we're actually going to go back and we're going to look at one of the diagrams that we looked at uh, yesterday or in our last lesson. So we're going to be looking at pages eight and nine. On pages eight and nine, there is a diagram to help us. And so diagrams in science help us provide, help us get important information about how things work. And in this example, it's how sound travels through materials. I'm gonna read you page eight. Page eight is on this side of the page. While I'm reading page eight, I'm gonna ask you to observe the diagram on page nine. And I want you to visualize, I want you to picture in your head what the movement uh, looks like to better understand how sound energy travels. So page eight, how do messages travel through the air, water, and ground? Many animals send sounds through the air, just like us. Others communicate underwater. Some animals even send sounds through the ground. The air, the water, and the ground are all materials. So is everything else you can touch. Materials are made up of millions and millions of tiny pieces called particles. Particles are too small to see, even with a microscope. We can't see particles, but we can visualize them. The diagram on the next page can help. Particles can move. Even in a solid material like the ground, particles can move a little bit. Animals send out sounds by moving the particles that make up materials like the air, water, and ground. Let's look at some examples of animal communication. We'll zoom in on this invisible world of particles to see how sounds travel through different materials. We're not going to do that quite yet. We're going to do that in another lesson. But I know that you're looking at this diagram. So in this diagram down here, which is the ground, we've got some particles, little pieces. They, to me, they look pretty close together. I see that they're in a square shape and I see some little arrows. When I look here, I see the particles. They're still pretty close together, but they're not in a nice, neat shape. I don't see them in a square and I see more lines here. So I'm visualizing these particles moving a little bit more. And up here, we've got particles that are not very close together. And it looks like they every single one of them has an arrow going on here. So I'm visualizing those all just shooting off in different directions. So the book tells us that everything is made of particles, the air around us, water and solids like the ground. Materials are made of particles that are too small to see. And so that gives us one of our new vocabulary words, which you've heard me say, and that's particle. So a particle is a tiny piece of material that is too small to see. Now, I'm wondering what you observe about the diagram and what you might think the different parts represent. So I told you some of my ideas and you might have some different ones. So if you have somebody in the room with you, this would be a really good time to share. Maybe show them the diagram and tell them, hey, this is what I see and this is what I think it means. 
I also want you to think about what you observed in the sim. So based on what you read in Sound on the Move, what do you think the dots in the sim represent? So we're back in the sim. I'll choose a different instrument for you this time. Let's do a piano. Hmm. I wonder what those dots in the sim represent. So based on what we read in Sound on the Move and what we observed in the sim today, I wonder what we can say about all materials, including water, air, and solids. I want you to make a prediction in your mind about what you think we're gonna say about all of these materials. So what we're gonna say is probably exactly what you were gonna say, which is that all materials are made of particles that are too small to see. Absolutely everything is made of particles. Uh, my hand is made of particles, your shirt is made of particles, your computer is made of particles, everything is made of particles, your breath is made of particles. So, okay, now I know that everything is made of particles. And with scientist Rachel, I know one of the things that you did was you started making your sound diagrams from your mother dolphin to the calf, and you started talking about, okay, how does the mother dolphin communicate with her calf? So I'm gonna show you my wave diagram, or I'm sorry, my sound diagram that I started. So here's my sound diagram. When I made my sound diagram, I showed the mother dolphin, and I wasn't exactly sure how to show this, so I showed that she was making sounds with just some little lines. I was picturing sound coming into the calf's ear. Do dolphins have ears? Interesting. Now, what I learned today is that everything is made of particles. So that makes me think, okay, if the mother dolphin and the calf are in the water, the water is made of particles. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a new color today. And I'm going to start drawing all these little particles. I know they're not super easy to see. So maybe if I use a little bit thicker, there we go, these will be easier to see. And so I won't make you watch me put all of my particles in. I'll finish my drawing later so that I can share it with you the next time that we talk. But that's what I'm going to add to my sound diagram. You might be adding something different, and I would be super excited to see and hear about what you created. All right. Now we're just gonna do a very quick reflection, and then that's going to end our lesson for today. So the big thing that we learned today Actually, I think there's two things that we learned today. One, we learned that everything is made of particles. And that's, that's pretty wild. Like I'm looking around my house and it's so crazy to think every single thing in my house is made of little tiny pieces. And the other thing that we learned about in our book today is that sound can travel through different kinds of materials. You saw this when you did some experiments in yesterday's lesson where you maybe tried to talk through a door or a pillow or a blanket or a wall. Sound can travel through different kinds of materials. We're going to keep playing around with some of these different ideas, and I'm really excited to see you in our next lesson, which is going to be lesson 2.3. I hope you have a great day, and I will see you soon.